And so, hello there, and welcome back to another Night of the Movies podcast. And in these podcasts, I talk all things movies and TV, and whatever I want, whenever I want. And in today's podcast, I'm reviewing the new A24 horror movie, Talk To Me. But, before I do that, I should say what's this now of every podcast I do, which is, if you are watching this podcast on YouTube, hello there to my viewers, but you prefer to listen to your podcasts, well you can with this one at Night of the Movies on Spotify, and if you are already listening to this podcast on Spotify, and you there to podcast listeners, then you can also check this podcast out visually on my YouTube channel at Night of the Movies on that platform too. Likewise, wherever you may be watching or listening to the podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the podcast, of course, and leave me some feedback on things to improve on in future podcasts because there's always things to improve on and feedback is as ever much appreciated so i'm gonna go straight into it today and i'm gonna go straight into my view of this new a24 horror movie talk to me so this as i mentioned is a new a24 horror movie and it's directed by two youtubers called danny philippow and michael philippow i might be pronouncing the names wrong and apologies if i am and they are best known for their YouTube channel, Racker Racker, which I must admit, I don't really know. I think all the way back in college, someone showed me a bit of one of their YouTube videos, which was a bunch of people with real looking lightsabers in a car park having a fight. It was quite entertaining, but I only watched like three minutes of that video. And I don't really know, them. I don't really know their YouTube material. I just know they are popular YouTubers and they have been doing YouTubing for a long while. That's all I've grasped from my little bit of research on them last night before preparing for this podcast for today. And yeah. I not really, I'm not really familiar with their YouTube work, or if you want to call that their YouTube material, and they dieted this movie though, and that intrigued me when I heard that it was two YouTubers dieting a horror movie like this with A24 behind it. That was really intriguing to me, and the film, this film, basically follows the story of a group of young adults who use this embalmed hand to contact spirits from beyond their deaths. But after they use this hand too much, things begin to go wrong and one of the main characters ends up, well, actually the main character ends up unleashing terrifying supernatural forces. So that's essentially the premise for the film. And honestly, I absolutely loved this movie. I'm very excited to talk about it because just because of how exciting I found the film, because of how thrilling I find it, I found it, because of how unsettling I found it, and because of how scary I found this movie. Towards the end of the film, I was literally watching the film through my things because I was so terrified as to where it was going, and I was also a bit panicked watching it in the cinema as well. Yes, this horror movie, this horror movie got me panicked in the cinema, which most horror movies and most thrillers don't usually do. Honestly, I had such a great time watching this in the cinema. And this is one of the films of 2023 so far. It'd probably be my top five, which is slightly ironic, because just yesterday, at least I think it was yesterday on this channel, I did my top three films of the year uh, so far. And this might have gone in that list. I mean, maybe, maybe not, but the point I'm making is it's one of the best films of 2023 so far because for me more than anything it felt like an experience it felt like a proper experience watching it in the cinema it didn't just feel like i was watching a movie in the cinema i felt so engaged in it and so enthralled by it and i was completely captivated by this movie even though the premise is a bit generic to a degree it's done in this creative and what feels like a fresh fashion that you just get so engaged in it and 
yeah, you just get taken over by the spell and it's unsettling and it's a bit of an uncomfortable watch, but in the way you want a horror movie like this to be, honestly, perfectly fits under the banner of A24 as its distributor. It really does. This feels like an A24 film because it feels unique, it feels distinctive, but it also fits into their category um, <laughs> as another uncomfortable film from A24, yeah. I really loved this movie and one of the reasons I loved it is because it's clearly a movie directed by YouTubers and I mean that in the best way possible. There is an energy with this film that I think you only really get of YouTubers and the way they move the camera in this movie as well and their framing, you can tell they've had experience with this because although... <laughs> Although you may not think about it like this, YouTube, making a YouTube video, or making a YouTube vlog, I don't know if that's what they've done, but making YouTube videos in general is, in a way, like making a short film. It is like making a mini-movie. Trust me, I've done that on this channel. Look at my holiday video compilations. I've literally made mini-movies, short films, on this channel, so I know first hand what is what what that entails and you can clearly tell that this film is made by YouTubers because of the way they move the camera because they have confidence with the directing and because of the energy that this film has. It's an it's an exciting film at times. It really is because of how they build up tension, they build up intensity and there's this energy that constantly keeps engaged in the movie. And there's also this energy with the main cast of the film as well, the main group of characters that we get, and there's the, the energy with the cast members that play them, which I think you only really get from two filmmakers who are YouTubers who I've seen in interviews have all this energy, which I think you'd only really get from these guys. Honestly, there's this energy in the movie which is, which is tangible and in the best way possible. It, yeah. I love how this film felt energetic in a way and I love the opening of this film as well because it clearly shows that these directors um, are big horror fans because the opening evokes the classic John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978 invokes the opening of that film with the one long take around the house and you get that at the start of this movie. It's it's a more modernised version of that. It's taking place at a party but there's another one long take and the way the opening plays out it just captures you. It grips you in its literally opening seconds and it doesn't let go and the opening you are sitting there and you are petrified in a way. You are just scared to death about what's going to happen. And then something really, really terrifying happens. And then it cuts to something else. So, like, right after that opening. And you're sitting there going, oh, why was that opening important? But then uh, the film explains why the opening was important. Later on in the movie. And it is reincorporated back into the narrative in a very exciting and excellent way in my opinion. I love the way it was reincorporated back into the narrative and I love the directing style and how unsettling all the film felt, all the, most of the film felt. I love how unsettling most of the film felt and when it is unsettling, it's not unsettling on purpose if you get what I mean and you know, I'm not a big fan of horror movies, I've spoken about this on this channel. I, I just, I don't like getting scared, that's my thing. It makes me sound uh, like a bit of a coward but I just don't like being scared but the funny thing is with this movie, I loved being scared by it. I loved how unsettling it was in the cinema and all the performances are fantastic from mostly unknown actors. The only actor I I um I, the only actor who was familiar to me in this film was the mother of the family. If you've seen the film you know who I mean. Um she was in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, so I recognised her, but the rest of the cast I didn't recognise, so I didn't have that Wes Anderson problem, which I spoke about on this channel recently. And so for me that made this a more engaging experience because I was able to believe in these characters more because I wasn't trying to do it different do it do that kind of speak differentiate between the actor and the character. All I felt like I was watching was the characters and I felt it was very believable. I believed in all the relationships. I believed in the dynamics. There's a great chemistry between the cast and 
yeah, I think they all did a great job, particularly um, particularly the main girl in the film. I've forgotten the name of her off the top of my head right now, but she does a really, really good job in this film. And, you know, I do have a couple of nitpicks here and there. I do think there are one too many storylines going on in the film. There's a storyline to the main character's dad, which I don't know if it was totally needed. I liked that storyline. I'm not saying it was bad. It was just the weakest storyline in the film, in my opinion. It felt a bit like they were trying to do something there, but I'm not sure if it fully worked. Again, I liked that storyline. I just thought it was a week to the film. And in my opinion, there was a slight misstep in the ending. I really love the ending of the film, by the way. I'm not saying it's a bad ending whatsoever. There was a slight misstep for me. And at the same time, the film probably could have been a short film and maybe had more effect and maybe would have had more effect on me although saying that if it was a short film the chance of me watching it i'm just being honest here the chance of me watching it this movie if it was a short film is quite unlikely because i don't go to cinema to watch short movies so you know i wouldn't have had this amazing experience watching this in the cinema if it was a short film so yes it might work better as a short film but the chance of me watching it is quite unlikely if it was a short movie so i am happy that it was a longer film that it was a full length feature film though um and you know saying that it's just over nine minutes it's like an hour 35 minutes i think that's the one time of the film and you know it does feel like that a bit you probably could have cut 10 minutes out of the film but it you're constantly gauging it though it's constantly gripping and it never really lets its guard down you never really get tied by the film it's just i think by the hour 20 minute mark at least for me I was ready for this film to end, but maybe that's because of how unsettling in its experience it is, and maybe it's just because I was, I was tired of feeling scared. I don't know. Maybe that's it. Maybe it isn't. Um, I will say that there are some problems with the concept of the film as well. This whole idea with this hand, and when you touch it, you can contact spirits. It's a bit of a weird concept. One of the things I really liked about this film, one of the things I actually loved about it, is how they play around the concept. They have fun with that concept. They don't just treat it way too seriously. There's one sequence in the film when you see all our main characters playing around with his hand and contacting all these spirits. And it's meant to be an entertaining sequence. It's meant to be a sequence in the film which is fun to watch and guess what it is i like the fact that yes this film has a bit of a silly concept but they embrace that they play into that and then when the film is serious it does go serious though you do feel how really intense and dark some of these sequences are in the movie i mean yes it has some really fun sequences but it also deals with some really dark themes and brings that into the horror of the movie, brings those themes, you know, embeds those themes into the horror of this film. Like, this film deals with ideas and themes such as suicide, depression, and self-harm. And it does so in a very interesting way for a horror movie. It, it makes those ideas into the whole of the film, if you get what I mean. Like, one of the main themes of the film is self-harm, and how they add that into the whole of the film, I thought they did particularly well. And I really liked how, at times, the horror felt so real. There's a verisimilitude with this film, and if you don't know what word is, look it up and then come back to this podcast. But there's a verisimilitude with this movie, which really adds to everything going on and how scary you find this film there's a yeah there's a real verse military with it which i loved and i loved how believable everything fell and i also loved that it had this bite with it that it never really let down until its final couple of minutes i mean it didn't really let down in the final couple of minutes it doesn't really let its bite down it's constantly gripping and you you don't want to take your eyes off the screen, but you, you kind of do at the same time as with the best horror movies, in my opinion anyway. And granted, I haven't seen loads of horror films, but I've seen enough to know what a good one is like. And yeah, this one I thought was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, because 
for me, more than anything, it was an experience. And that's what I really love about the best movies. They feel like experiences. For me, the best movie of the year is still Oppenheimer, and that film felt like an experience. And, you know, that was also the case with this movie. It felt like an experience. I was gripped from the start, and my grip, my captivation by this film, I don't know that's a word, but the way I was captivated by this film didn't really let go at all. Yeah, I don't really have any major problems with the film. And the ending, I mean, I was sitting there in the last half an hour of the film thinking, where the hell is this going to end? I mean, I have somewhat of an idea, but I don't really know. And I was sitting there thinking, where is this film going? How is it going to end? And yet it ends in such a way that I think is near perfect. I think the ending to the film is near perfect. It's got a slight misstep, and it's a spoiler, so I'm not going to go into the slight misstep. Um, but if you've seen the film, I wonder if you feel the same about me. I wonder if you feel. I wonder if you'll feel the same as I do about a little moment in the final minutes of the film, which I thought was just a slight little misstep. But other than that, I thought the ending was. Yeah, I thought the ending was probably the best ending you could have imagined for this film. I absolutely adored it if you hadn't got that already and it was a real surprising experience for me because I'd only seen the trailer for this film like once about three months ago in the cinema and it didn't really get my interest when I saw it. I wasn't, I watched the trailer and was like, eh, probably wouldn't be for me and then I went to cinema yesterday not really knowing what to expect and I was... Yeah, I was kind of blown away by this film. In fact, I wasn't even kind of blown away. I was blown away. This is one of the best films of the year. I, I truly think it is. And it's got a bite to it. And, you know, I think one of the reasons for that is because it's directed by YouTubers. And you can tell that, but in the best way possible. But it also feels cinematic. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels cinematic. And it feels exciting at times. And there's this great popcorn sort of entertainment value which I think really works but also it does what a horror movie it does what you want a horror movie to do it feels unsettling it feels scary and yeah it got me I was scared by this movie and I felt panicked by the end of it I was panicking in the cinema watching this movie <laughs> I was and in the way you want to though with a film honestly if you are in the way you want to with a horror movie should I say honestly if you're in the mood to watch a horror movie right now in the cinema and you've already seen Oppenheimer because in many ways I think that is a horror movie but if you've already seen Oppenheimer because I would recommend Oppenheimer over this still because Oppenheimer is still my favourite film of the year as I've said many times on this channel already but if you've already seen Oppenheimer and you're feeling like you want to go to the cinema to watch another horror movie then I would recommend this one because I do think it's worth your time and I just I loved it I really did and I couldn't believe how much I got into it as well how much I invested I got with the film how invested I got with the characters how emotive the film was as well and the pathos and everything yeah I really really loved this movie Far more than I expected it to. And so, all in all, I'm going to say that talk to me. I'm going to say that it's a 9 out of 10. The reason I'm not giving it a 10 out of 10 or 9.5 out of 10 is because I do have a couple of small points of the film. And, you know, I didn't find it quite the amazing experience that I had with Oppenheimer. I didn't find it quite on the same level as that experience. But the fact is, I have never heard of these the, the director of these films before. I've never heard the directors behind this film before and yet you can clearly tell they've got a bright career ahead of them in filmmaking and horror filmmaking and I can't wait to see what they do next. In fact I love it they didn't make a horror film next and they did something completely different to show their versatility but nevertheless they did a great job with their first full length feature film which was made which was distributed by A24, you know, they did such a great job with this film, and I was, yeah, I was really, really taken by it, I was, I fell under its spell, as you want from a film like this, and I, I actually think it's one of the best horror movies of the past, yeah, the past five years, I think it's up there with the Quiet Place movies, because it's a film like the Quiet Place films, which has, you know, a bit of a... <laughs> A bit of a silly premise, a bit of a silly concept, I will say that, and that's one of the reasons I'm not giving it a 10 out of 10, 
but it embraced that concept. And in a way, I think it's maybe better than the Quiet Place films. And I loved those movies, particularly. I loved the first Quiet Place, and I also really loved uh, the second one as well. But for me, I might prefer this movie. I might prefer this film because it embraces the concept a bit more and does some silly ideas with it, but it all worked. It just all really worked to me. I believed in the family dynamics. I believed in the relationships. I believed in everything going on. And I thought all the performances were fantastic. I... I I just, I really loved this movie. I really loved how engaged I was with it, how captivated I was with it, how well it was directed, the confidence and direction, and right from the opening scene, I was engaged by it and I couldn't wait to see what was going on. You get the point. I loved this movie, been round on about it for way too long, but like I've already mentioned, it's a horror movie with bite, and it's diets by YouTubers, and I mean that in the best way possible, and it is one of the films of the year so far. It's one of the best films of 2023 so far. Go and check it out, because I highly recommend it, and I do think it is definitely worth your time. And so, as I've already said, I'm going to say that Talk To Me is a 9 out of 10 from me. Anyway, guys, uh, that is it for today's podcast. Uh, let me know your thoughts on Talk To Me if you have seen the film in the comment section below because I'd love to hear people's thoughts on the movie. And if you haven't checked it out, as what he mentioned, go and check it out. Watch Oppenheimer first and then if you feel like another horror movie, because I do think Oppenheimer can be classed as a horror film, if you feel like watching another horror movie after Oppenheimer, go and check out Talk To Me. Oh yes, it's unsettling and it's uncomfortable and all the ways you want it to be. Anyway guys, thank you as always for watching or listening and if you haven't yet, please do click down below and like subscribe on this podcast and look forward to many more podcasts coming very, very soon on this channel. Thank you as always for watching or listening and I will see you guys again soon, but bye for now. Bye!